Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the progressive. We'll quickly take a look at communication styles of a sentence. Each one has its style. There's nothing wrong or right about it. It's just a style we all develop. So we look at every one of the 12 ascendants, and it's interesting because according to Vedic astrology, communication has three parts: the mind, the speech, and the throat and the hands. House number one, house number two, and house number three. Okay. So how you write, how you speak and how you think and what you bring to your speech and how you communicate, this is what will be prominent. Some people can write very sweetly but their talking is very harsh. Some people can be the other way around. Some people are very calculated in their speech. Some people are very philosophical in their speech, like me for example. So what defines what kind of ascendant? It's nothing wrong or right about anything but it becomes very interesting to note, you should see this presentation. It's a very quick presentation. Take care and have a nice day. Once again, so here we have the 12 ascendants. We begin with the Aries. Let's see how these people communicate. You got to see the first house as I spoke of. You got to see the second house, the mouth, the speech. And you got to see the third house, which is neck and hands. This is mostly written, but it also becomes speech. This is mostly speech. Okay, and this is how your mind is going to color all these these two because mind you take it everywhere all the 12 houses. Okay, those are the rules. So first house for an Aryan is ruled by Mars. So he will take the Martian energy to both this house aggressive, bold, outspoken. In Aries, it is more Rajasic movable and male sign. As you can see, RMM is Rajasic movable and male. So in this case, he will he or she will take martian energy into venus martian energy into mercury now what these people communicate like where their speech is very soft spoken because it is ruled by house number two venus okay so this speech becomes very sweet and very good at marketing kind of thing because it's venus it's ruled by venus and yet their writing becomes very calculative because it's ruled by Gemini, it's ruled by logic and reasoning. They can even talk very convincingly because it's ruled by Gemini. It's very intellectual talk, very logic and reasoning, intellectual based conversation. And yet sometimes they may carry aggression into it because there is Mars influence from the ascendant. Interesting, isn't it? For Taurus people, it's ruled by Venus, so they will carry an energy of Venus, but it's an earth sign, so they will be very earthly and very practical in that sense, so to speak, right? So they will carry an energy of practicality right over there. And yet, um, you can see in the second house, it is ruled by Gemini. So, ruled by Mercury, which is house number three, uh, sign number three, okay? So, this people will have a speech which is very, very interested in logic and reasoning mercury is all about intellect logic and reasoning very intellectual conversations they would like to have what comes out of their mouth will be very very intellectual in nature whereas how they would tend to write house number three will be very emotional in nature these people can write really fancy love letters because it's ruled by venus and in the house of writing and communications and social media even these people can be highly romantic and emotional can be a little deceptive though they are actually looking for intellectually stimulating conversations but writing can become very very emotional okay that's the taurian energy now for gemini well first house there mercury so they will take intellectuality into both their speech and their writing skills. Here it becomes ruled by moon, so they become very emotional in communication. Gemini people are one of the most emotional in their speech. They do not like to make harsh speeches. And yet their writing skills become very egotistical, very dominant. Sometimes even speech becomes very dominant. So they go between two prominent luminaries here, energy of sun and energy of moon. Moon wants to take it all emotional. Sun wants to feel all egotistical and center of attention. Sun wants to get attention all the time. 
So Gemini people may come across as fluctuating because it's a dual sign as well. It fluctuates. This is why Gemini people are confusing for people to understand. They fluctuate between their in their conversation and they love conversation because they are ruled by Mercury. But they are shuttling between two opposite kind of forces, the sun and the moon. Sometimes they are very emotional. At other times they are suddenly very egotistical. So people have a hard time figuring them out to like, who the hell are you? What are you about? Cancer. First house, moon. So they will take an emotional signature to their speech and to their writing skills. And yet their speech will be very highly egotistical. People will listen to a cancer person and think this person is very, very egoistic. Why? It's ruled by sun. Whereas their writing will be very calculated. It's the rule. house number six is of calculation, Virgo. Very calculated approach to everything. Very earthy kind of writing skills. So they're very excellent at writing letters, communication, emails and so on and so forth. They're very good in social media because their speech is very calculated in writing. This is house number three is more of arms and shoulders. So it's more about writing. Leos, on the other hand, they're ruled by sun, so they'll take ego everywhere, typical Leos. And they have very calculated approach in speaking. They are very cautious. Leos are very silent. They are very cautious in what they speak because their speaking is very earthy in nature. They want to know if there is something gains for them. Sun wants to gain everything towards itself. If there is any value in conversation, they'll speak. Otherwise, they'll shut up. They'll just be quiet. And in the house of written skills in social media, they have Libra, they have Venus. So they can be very, very flamboyant. They can be very generous in their uh, congratulatory aspects to appreciate people. They'll come across to people in the wider social media and everything as very, very charming because Libras are charming. So they will come across like that in the social media, in their written skills, in writing emails, and etc. This is a little deceptive in every sign, isn't it? As you're following, because there are different planets ruling and there's different one in the ascendant. All three are different, okay? Virgos, on the other hand, there's house number six, so they are very earthy in communications as such, and they love to communicate, but very practical nature. They will take that to both their speech and to their writing skills. So how would Virgo ascendants communicate? Um, they have Libra in the second house, very liberal communication. They're all about liberal. Uh, they might even support, support the liberal parties in their countries because they are very liberal in their speech. And they are very aggressive in their writing. This is what I was talking about earlier. See, some people will come across, especially Virgo ascendants, they will come across as soft while speaking. But if they write emails, it will come across as, wow, this person is writing is very, very harsh. Mars is ruling here, 8th house. And they will be very secretive as well in their writing. They might not write the whole story, keep half the story to themselves. Why? Because it is Mars in Scorpio, it's secretive sign. Okay. In terms of Libra, Venus is ruling the 7th house, but it's an air sign. So they will take the liberal Venus energy as in mental energy to their speech and to their writing skills. So in second house, there is Scorpio now. So Libra and Ascendant in Scorpio second, they'll be very secretive. They will not reveal much in their talking and their speech. They will keep many things to themselves. They're very secretive people. They're careful about what they speak and to whom they speak and why that, why they are speaking such and such a thing. Okay. That's a typical Libra in there. They might even get very sharp and cutting speech. Librans are known for suddenly becoming harsh and very harsh in their speech. Because there is Scorpio ruling the second house. Scorpio can bite, the scorpion can bite. In the house of writing, they have, and speech again, they have Jupiter and in Pisces, sorry, in uh, Sagittarius. So they're very philosophical in their writing skills. They're very philosophical with the social media. They are very philosophical in their emails and how they approach people in general because third house is going into the external world really in terms of communication. Second house is speech more in general. 
so there they can become very philosophical conversationalists um, in the house of Scorpio as a Scorpio ascendant you're taking Mars as a very cutting talk very harsh speech very harsh energy Martian energy quiet and introverted most of the time but when they talk they can suddenly land up jump up to bite it's like there's no middle ground between talking and biting for a Scorpio ascendant so they come in the second house it's ruled by Jupiter so they are more interested in philosophical speeches they love to talk philosophy a lot but when it comes to writing and talking with the external world and communicating with the external world they're very very cautious they're very calculated this is a house of effort for them they have to take a lot of effort in trying to communicate their ideas because it's ruled by Capricorn they are very frugal in their conversation. Wherever Capricorn lands, it's a house of frugality. Okay, being very, very frugal, stingy with conversation. They like to talk less. This is why Scorpions come across as mysterious. Because they open their mouths and philosophy comes out. But when you ask them to write or do major things, they will become very reserved all of a sudden. Okay. Sag, what do Sag people communicate as? Ruled by Jupiter, so they will take philosophy everywhere. It's philosophy in speech, philosophy in writing. But both these houses are ruled by Saturn for them. Okay? So they will be frugal in their speech, they will be frugal in their writing skills. They are highly introverted people, Sagittarians. Although they believe in taking philosophy everywhere, Jupiter is even debilitated here, as you can see. It's not doing very well here. And in Aquarius, again ruled by Saturn. So uh, both these houses for Sagittarians makes it difficult for them to have good flow of communications. They're very introverted people. Really speaking, these are introverted people. The quietest ones in the room will be a Sag. Capricorn, ruled by 10, so they will take frugality to both speech and to writing. So they will not want to communicate much primarily because of this and second house being ruled by Aquarius which is again ruled by Saturn so it will be less of speech Capricorns also speak very less however they love to write a lot because this is ruled by Pisces and it's ruled by Jupiter and it will love to communicate writing in philosophical terms speech very less writing in philosophical terms and very dreamy kind of writing Capricorn in ascendance are very dreamy writings. I've seen this even in my friends. Aquarius, house ruled by Saturn, so less of everything, less of speech, less of writing. In speech, they have got Jupiter. House number 12 comes in second. So they are very philosophical in their speech, but very aggressive in their writing and talking to others. They can get really cruel, really fast. So this flip for us, Aquarius, ascendant people, makes it difficult for them to figure themselves out or for others to figure them out. This is something similar to Cancer because they have Sun and Moon. Uh, sorry, Gemini because they have Sun and Moon in first and second. These two are contradictory. They will talk less because they are carrying the Saturn energy right to second and third house. However, Second house is very Jupiterian, so it's 12, house number 12 is very dreamy. Piscean energy is very dreamy, philosophical, out there in the other worlds, other dimensions, etc. Always thinking about a dreamy world, house number 12. So the speech becomes very dreamy like, oh, what about this? What about that? You know, what if we are living in a world like this and so on and so forth? They'll come across like that in the speaking. But if you touch certain parts of theirs which they do not agree with, they can suddenly turn extremely aggressive. Because not only is this the enemy house, it's ruled by Mars and it's a very male sign. Number one, this makes Aquarius suddenly become very, very cutting, sharp in their speech. So Pisces, so Pisces is ruled by 12, which is Jupiter. So Jupiter looks at expansive communications in speech and in writing and in social media. So what does Jupiter do here? Well, their communication of Pisces ascendant as speech 
is very very bold forthright they want to speak these are the people who feel stifled in their speech earlier on in life but they are very very bold earlier on in life as well so they have they can have generally a lot of battles with their family earlier on in life because of this attitude they have jupiter in their head which is very expansive energy but they are being restricted by their family and which is going to mars and aries bold and outwards they will very very bold communications right later on in life they might become restricted because the house number 10 okay so this is what pisces net has to work through in life they need not be they should learn to speak up their heart and mind okay throughout their life in the house number three they, you have taurus which is very earthy sign like so they are looking for sensual grounded communications very materialistic earthly sensual kind of communications they have in writing skills this is why these Piscean ascendants can make very good novelists because this third house is also the house of writing communication as in writing communication have, can have two parts it is speech and it's writing and it's what's in the mind okay so ladies and gentlemen that's my short take on the communication skills as per vedic astrology take care have a good day Bye-bye.